Hey guys, coming up in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this golf cart battery by Allied. Now this is a far superior battery over your dirty, stinky, heavy lead acid batteries. This is a great replacement battery that is gonna last a long time. So this battery is meant to be a straight up replacement. You can remove your lead acid batteries and then you can just install this with the positive and negative terminal and that's it, you should be done. So let's take a look at this battery and we'll test it for capacity. Later on in a separate video, I'm gonna do an install on my golf cart. So for your golf cart needs, this battery can do 180 amps of continuous discharge. We have varying levels of peaks. I'll put that up on the screen. Uh, we also have multiple protections. So we have over voltage, under voltage, over temperature, under temperature, over current. We also have a bunch of certifications for this battery that I will display on the screen. This battery also boasts an IP67 watertight rating, which is gonna be great because it's gonna be used outdoors. Now this battery weighs in at 108 pounds, which is gonna be a good weight loss for your cart if you are removing, let's say four 12 volt batteries or six eight volt or 12 six volt batteries. This is gonna reduce the overall weight of your cart. For the measurements of the battery, 10 inches to the top of the handle or about nine and five eighths to the top of the case. And we have 11 and three quarter. Now let's take a closer look at this battery. Now looking at the top of the battery down, we have the company name, Allied Battery, the power of lithium, 51.2 volt, 105 amp hour. That's the nominal voltage of lithium iron phosphate. So we have lithium iron phosphate here. If you leave for more than five days, turn off battery pack. Now there is a on off button on the side. I will show you in a minute. So here we have a warning high voltage. Incorrect installation can cause serious injury. Now this battery pack itself is 51.2 volts. If you were to series these up, that'd be like 102.4 volts if you were to series these packs. So do not series these packs. You wanna put them in parallel. Installation should only be performed by an authorized professional. Do not expose to temperatures above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit. Use only recommended charger. Now they do supply a charger in the kit for this battery that you need to use. It is gonna void the warranty if you don't use their charger. Only connect in parallel, not series, like I was talking about on point number one and do not expose to sparks, flames, or other combustible materials. Up here you can see we have the weight, 108 pounds or 49 kilograms. We have my VIN number, lithium iron phosphate, model number, uh, nominal voltage, and capacity. And all other sides of the battery pretty much look like this, except this one here has a plate on here that has sort of like a serial number. This is gonna be for connecting to the Bluetooth. Now on the side of the battery, we have our terminal post, which is our negative and positive. We have a power on off button. We have a CAN port and an RS485 port. And you can see we have a pinout here that they have connections for. I will show that in a minute. And we have our on off switch. And I can hear the BMS beeping and now the BMS is turned on. This will also turn on if the power button is off and you connect the charger, it will automatically turn on the BMS. And then once charging is complete, the BMS will just shut down. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that came with the battery itself. So we have an inspection sheet where they've actually gone through and expected everything. So appearance, insulation test, earth communication test. So we have a bunch of different things, power on off, bypass charging, um, we also have another test report sheet here that's going through all the different standards for their testing, which is really nice that they show that they're actually doing their diligence and testing the batteries before they send them out. And we have a user manual for the charger that comes with the kit. Now the charger itself, now this is the waterproof charger. They include a AC outlet that you can install onto your cart itself. So you no longer actually have to carry around a uh, certain charger to charge your batteries. You can actually install this directly into your cart and then run the power cable um, out the side of your cart. And this is just a regular AC outlet. Um, I will show you, actually I'll show you that right now. So in the kit, they actually supply one of these that has a plug-in and then you put this on the exterior of your cart 
in order to plug in an extension cord. And then you're driving around with your charger all the time. You just need to carry an extension cord and use that to charge your cart, which is amazing because then you don't have to carry around your charger and worry about it falling off the cart and getting damaged. You just literally install this right onto the cart and just leave it there. This is waterproof. This will do 15 amps of charging. And that connects into this style of a plug here. That will run to this waterproof connection port that runs to the terminals of your battery. So that's charging. And then you would just connect your positive and your negative for your cart up to that as well. I would suggest putting the cart positive and negative first and then putting the charger positive negative over top of that. Uh, what also comes in the packet is you get a buck converter. So this is gonna take voltage from 48 or 51.2 nominal and bring it down to 12 volts. So if you have any accessories you wanna run, like on my cart, I actually have a radio, um, I have USB plugins, I have a cigarette socket plugin for a cooler, right all on my golf cart. So this is gonna allow you to do that. Or if you have turn signals or anything like that that runs on 12 volt, this is gonna take it down from uh, 48 volt down to 12 volt. And again, you have the same style plugin as the charger, which they give you another plugin for that as well, which is this one here. So again, what I would probably do um, if I was connecting that onto the post here is I would put my cart cables on first, then I would put the charger cable, uh, then I would put the cable for the buck converter last and then bolt it and tighten it together. And we also get a, another set of cables. These are four gauge uh, silicone wire. Uh, this is gonna be so if you want to swap out, normally carts have like a six gauge wire. Uh, if you wanna beef it up to a four gauge, that is gonna be ideal because you're gonna get more power out of this than you were with your uh, lead acid batteries. We also get a couple of brackets here for different mounting scenarios. So this will bolt to the two uh, mounting points here on the bottom of the battery. And this is either gonna lift it up or uh, maybe come in underneath something for, for some sort of uh, different mounting options. And they give all the nuts and bolts that are all stainless steel. Uh, they give all that for the mounting options. And lastly, which I think is the coolest, is we actually have and we have a very clear, uh, easy to read display here. It's a gauge that's gonna go onto the cart. Uh, we have a long wire so you can route it from the battery up through the front of your cowling. And this is gonna give you a percentage of what you have left for your capacity. Now this is cool, I have been playing with this battery already a little bit, and right now it's lit up uh, nice and white, and you can see that in the sun very well. It's lit up very bright, and 100% state of charge is very clearly defined. And what's another thing that's cool that I've seen about this gauge, I'm gonna try and hold it steady here for a minute, and until the display goes out, because I believe there's something inside of here that once it gets bumped or moved, then the display comes on, but if it's sitting idle, then it just goes out, which is gonna conserve power. So I'm gonna try and hold it still here for a minute. Let's just put it down on top of the battery. I'm gonna leave it like that, and once I see the display go out, I'll pick it up and shake it, and you'll see it come on. Okay, and you can see there the display is out. I put it more level, I don't know if that made a difference, but now watch when I go to pick it up. See, it comes back on. So that's really cool, if you imagine like, getting onto your cart, just the rocking motion of the cart alone turns this display on. Or if you go to use power or charge it, it is also gonna turn the display on. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna plug the charger in just to make sure it's fully topped up. And you'll see the screen, the backlit will go off and it'll, it'll show you it's charging, it'll show you the percentage, but it's not gonna be lit up bright. So if you're parked at night and you plug it in, this isn't gonna be beaming off a bunch of light. It uh, takes away from the backlit, and that way it's uh, inconspicuous, I guess you can say. But you can still see it on the display that it's charging. Let's take a look at this app now. Now let's plug in the charger. We are at 100%, so I may not see any charging. So right now you can see we are at 100%, but we are still charging right now. I'm just going to let this charge up. Oh, and I can see the balance light is on there. Okay, that's a good sign. So this has a built-in balancer. I'll show that once I open it up. We have the BMS itself, but then we also have a secondary balancer for this battery. 
which is pretty neat. I'll show that once I open the, the lid up. But I'm gonna let this charge up until it hits the full 100%, and then I'm going to do a discharge test. Okay, and I'm ready to start my discharge test. So let's turn on the inverter. Okay, and you can see we're discharging at negative 14.6 amps. Negative 14.6 amps on the smart shunt here. So let's increase that power. You can see there now we are discharging with just under 20 amps, 19.4. Go over here, 19.6. Let's go back. Yeah, 19.6, 19.7. So about 19.6, 19.7. Let's go back to the smart shunt, 19.6. So we're in and around, right around the range as the uh, Bluetooth app is calculating. So I'm gonna let this test run and I'll be back with the results once the test is done. The discharge test is almost complete and the display has now changed to a red color and it's signifying E, recharge now. And you can see it there, E, recharge now. Discharge test is concluded. We are at 106.225 amp hours. And on the app, we can see we had a cell under voltage event. So that's pretty good. We got 106.225. That is over an amp what the specifications are. So this test is a pass. They're using good cells. They do also supply these terminal covers that I forgot to mention earlier. Let's open this up and take a look inside. Now to open this battery, there is Phillips screws around the perimeter. I do not suggest that you open this battery up on your own. I'm taking a risk opening it. So leave this to the professionals. This is a higher voltage. All right, I can see that we have a gasket in here. Gasket running along the perimeter that's gonna give it that water seal. And we have a nice cover plate that goes over top. And that is held on with a couple of zip ties. So let's remove those so I can get this cover off. And there we go. This is the top cover that was covering the top of the cells. Okay, so looking at the top of this, this is two 24 volt packs. So we have one 24 volt pack here and another 24 volt pack here. And then they are series connected with this bus bar right here. This is like a flexible PCB board on top of the cells. It's not gonna allow me to see what type of cells they're using. If I had to guess, looking at the vent caps, I would say they're Eve cells, but I'm not 100% sure. I might actually be able to get to this QR code right here. So that is connected right here. Yeah, I might be able to get into this one. Anyways, this is how they're connecting the cells. So this is gonna be the main negative, and it comes through all these cells here, over to the positive, and then over to here and then it's gonna come through all these cells and this is going to be the main positive of the 48 volt pack. So we have the negative, it's gonna run down into the BMS and then out of the BMS to the negative post, which is on this side here. And then the positive is just gonna run straight down to the positive. So we can see over here, we have all of our balance lead cables that are all marked with each individual cell number. These are all soldered on with a bit of goop glue over top like to keep solder from corroding or anything like that. Wicked design, really nice. You can see that this PCB board and this connection here going to each cell is just strictly from the BMS and all these other individual balance cables here is from their balancer that is inside deep in back here. You can't really see it in the video, but they do have a balancer down in the bottom there. Now over here, I noticed this little probe right here, this comes around, loops in, and runs in down over here, and there is actually fire suppression on this battery. So you can see that writing there, uh, that is going to be the fire suppression device. You can see down in there, uh, it's bolted down the whole entire battery carriage, bolted down to the case so it's not gonna bump around when you're going over bumps. Down in there and that's where the balancer is for the separate balancing. So I can see from down in the balancer, comes up to these like Wagyu connector sort of things and then they spread out to all the different cells. I can see we have shipping strap holding it together. 
as well as bolts. I believe that shipping strap is just there for a secondary. And then down in here, we have two temperature sensors that are glued onto the cells. So I have temperature sensor number one here and temperature sensor number two. So I'm gonna test this for low and high temperature charging protection. Everything in here is, is nice. Whoever engineered this and designed this did a really fantastic job. Okay, now cold temperature test. I have the app running. So we'll see what that does once I apply the cold pack. So let's just take one of the temperature sensors and cool it. Now also right here, I have a clamp meter showing that it's charging at 15.32 amps. And if we take a look at the temperature sensor, oh, there we go. We had a under temperature event. So we also uh, stopped discharging here. Now we just commenced again. Let's try the second temperature sensor. And the second temperature sensor, there we go, we just disconnected. So we have low temperature protection on this battery, which is great. Okay, and we've commenced charging again. So now let's try heat. So over temperature protection. And there you go. We have disconnected, we have over temperature. Let's cool this probe down. And charging has started again. And let's try the other temperature sensor. And again there, we have an over temperature event. So low temperature and high temperature protection both work. And there you go, we've commenced charging again. And like I was saying, with the 6% charging, you can see how the screen is now no longer white. It's like a orange color, which is gonna be good in the dark. So let me turn off the lights in here and see what it looks like. So as you can see there, we have a subtle orange color instead of a bright white color, which is gonna be great during night hour charging so that you're not uh, lighting up the whole neighborhood. Okay, as far as the cells they're using, I did cut a little bit of this top piece back so I can see the QR code. Was not able to pick it up on my QR scanner, but I will put a picture of it up on the screen. And if you guys wanna look into what type of cells these are, maybe comment that below, that would be great. Uh, I can see also we have some separation here, some fish paper in between each cell has separation. The two 24 volt packs are separated. So all in all, very beautifully constructed pack. So I'm gonna put this back together uh, and then I will talk a little bit more. I didn't show as well, but on the lid here, we have resin board also protection and where the screws come through, we have glue. Okay, I got it all back together and this is gonna wrap up my review of the Alite battery. So with this package, you get the charger, the battery, multiple connections, buck converter, a fuel gauge, uh, everything you need to just straight out replace your lead acid batteries. This has a 180 amp of continuous discharge and certain levels of peak, more than enough to be able to handle what you're gonna throw at it as far as driving your cart around, going up hills, down hills, and all the, the sort. So check out the website. I'll leave links in the description below. And as always, thank you very much for watching my videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you go. It really helps out the channel, as well as hit the like button too. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Bye.